It's hard to come by great Greek food and you're paying for this when you could be paying this. That is but cheaper. So today we are making Greek gyros for a very cheap price of $2. Wow, wow, wow. Pull your gut dang wallets out. Blow it out, get it all lubricated. And guess what? You too can make gyros with minimal equipment. You don't need all the fancy spindles and this and that. Sure, it's nice to have. You can do this with a basic oven, some skewers. Oh, but Josh, you're gonna use the little baking steel for the pita. Okay. Listen. Pita. Just put a baking sheet in the oven and let it get in the same way you would a baking steel and it would work. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Okay, we got gyros. Gyros are simple. Pita, meat, tzatziki, maybe some other fun accoutrement, but that's really it. What makes it good is giving a <laughs> to use proper technique. I cannot stress this enough. And I know I always like to make my own bread and people are like, oh, look at Josh being so cute. Listen, most store-bought pita is so trash. Its shape is better suited to be a frisbee than anything else. So making it yourself will present thousands of miles worth of a difference and it's super easy. Two cups or 487 grams of lukewarm water in a container, then whisk in one tablespoon or 14 grams of instant yeast, followed by one and a half tablespoons or 18 grams of granulated sugar was still dissolved and separately in a large bowl add five cups or 750 grams of bread flour in one tablespoon or 15 grams of fine sea salt mix together till combined pour your yeasty juices into your flour mixture stir by hand until you get a shaggy dough the need for three to four minutes or until you get a smooth and Dough. Cover with plastic wrap and rise at room temp for one hour or in the fridge overnight if you want to make it ahead. Look at you planning ahead. That's a nice little gold star from Papa. 30 minutes before baking, either using an inverted baking sheet or a baking steel, place that into the middle of your oven, preheat to 475 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, and then punch your dough down. Split into eight pieces, around 150 grams each. Form each piece into a doit ball. Cover with a damp towel or greased plastic wrap and rest for 15 minutes. Then just take each ball and roll them into discs around seven to eight inches wide. Then one at a time, open your oven up and carefully slide a disc into your oven using a floured pizza peel or a cutting board. Close and bake for one to two minutes or until it begins to puff nicely. Flip it over and cook for one to two more minutes. Then immediately remove, place it in a towel to keep it from drying out and repeat with the rest. Next up, Papa's Big Meat. Oh Josh, but cheaper, how can you make gyro meat without a spindle? Listen, imagine a life where instead of looking for problems, you look for solutions. So first you'll need three pounds or 1.3 kilograms of boneless pork Boston butt. Cut that roughly into half inch slices. It does help to freeze this for about an hour before slicing. Now once all that sliced, let's make a basic spice mix consisting of one tablespoon or three grams of dried oregano, one tablespoon or nine grams of paprika, two teaspoons or six grams of fresh cracked black pepper, one tablespoon or nine grams of kosher salt, one tablespoon or three grams of finely chopped rosemary, mix till combined, then add five cloves of garlic, very finely chopped, mix together one more time, and stir in two tablespoons or 30 grams of vegetable oil until you get a nice paste. Rub your meat off with all your seasoning paste, then once fully coated, get yourself long skewers at least eight to ten inches long. Optionally, you can stab them into an apple or an onion, then one slice at a time. Stab and stack your meat onto the skewers, stacking all the way up until you have a glorious meat tower. Pop that bad boy onto a foil lined baking sheet, ideally with a wire rack set on top if you have one, and roast in an oven that's been preheated to 400 Fahrenheit, rotating often for about 45 minutes or until cooked to an internal temp of 155 to 160 Fahrenheit and beautifully brown and lightly charred in little spots. Then remove and let it rest for 15 minutes. Now this will be sliced thinly and beautifully, but only when you're about to serve. Do not slice the meat and let it sit to dry out like it's in the Mojave Desert and you're okay, we're not making jerky. Next, we're gonna make our toppings. What comes after Papa's Big Meat? Papa's White Sauce. Medium sized bowl. Start with two cups or 450 grams of full fat Greek yogurt, that's full fat. Half of a seedless English cucumber, grated, which will then be lightly salted, tossed, and squeezed of its excess moisture. Once it's given up a good amount of its liquid, you can then add it to your yogurt, along with a quarter cup or 15 grams of very finely chopped parsley, salt and pepper to taste, three cloves of garlic grated, and two tablespoons or 18 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And you have my big, thick tzatziki. Moving on. Half a red onion, slice as thinly as you can. Mandolin, not mandatory, but helpful. Pop those into a small bowl, cover with a wire rack, and wash and soak for about 30 seconds, drain the water, and you have raw onion so good while raw, you'll be spanking yourself wondering why you ever cooked it. For tomatoes, you'll just need two Roma tomatoes, sliced moderately thin, and salted just before serving. Now, albeit optional, this is probably my most favorite topping of all time, a humble french fry. 
cut two russet potatoes into matchsticks, pop into a bowl, generously seasoned with salt, cover with water, and let that soak for 15 minutes. Drain the water, dry the potatoes off with paper towels, get yourself a pot filled halfway with vegetable oil, so about two quarts, heat to 325 Fahrenheit, fry your potatoes in batches about one to two minutes, or until just barely cooked through. Remove from the oil and drain, then increase the heat to 375 Fahrenheit, and yet again, in batches, fry your potatoes, and this time, until they get a beautifully crispy golden brown crust around the potato, remove from the oil and drain. Remember, always immediately hit generously with salt while it's still hot and fresh. But Josh, what happens if you let them sit too long? Well, the salt will bounce right off them, brothers. Now the time for assembly has come. Big boy Peter down. I mean, wow, these things are fat, and there ain't no problem with that. You could totally cut each ball in half when making the dough, by the way, and get more pita that's moderately sized. Add a nice generous pile of your meat, which you waited to slice fresh right? Do you want your kiss from Papa or not? Fold that up with a generous dollop or two of your tzatziki. Don't be scared to be generous here. Stack on some hot, salty French fries, your tomato slices, which have been salted, your red onion, and optionally to finish things up, you can add some fresh parsley on top for a little pop of green. Now let's taste and see if this is as good for our mouths as it is for our wallets. Look at this baby. Ooh. Ah, that's busting. Oh my god. Look at that, you got the potatoes, the tomatoes, greens, beans, tomatoes, potatoes, pork, pork, yo, yo. Something this beautiful for this price. Bottom is like crispy, but the top is fluffy. Jesus. I don't know that I would be able to tell any difference between a butt cheaper version and a normal version. This is kind of like everything you need. And it also shows the beauty and simplicity of Greek cuisine. You don't need a lot of money to make a great Greek dish. An incredible wrap sandwich, whatever you want to call it. We're bringing a representative of Greek culture in today. Pano, step in. This is his moment to shine. Every single day he's told us that he's Greek like we've forgotten. We get it, okay? You're Greek. Emotionally preparing myself because I know how good this is going to be. Oh my goodness. I'm not kidding. I didn't watch you do the seasoning for the pork. In Greece, when they make gyros, they don't do like the lamb and beef that they do in the United States as much. It's not as popular, they use this pork. However you seasoned it, tastes exactly like it's from Greece. <laughs> the proportions are a little bit different than you'd get in a restaurant in Greece, yeah. but the exact same flavor, emphasis on putting the fries in the middle with the tomato, the onions, you hit it on the head. The Greek sign off. We're better than Italians. Just kidding, Italians are great. Just Greeks know food a little bit better. <laughs> Ask Gordon Ramsay, he said it. No, you did a phenomenal job. All right, we got the Greek sign off. You heard it here, and all for an affordable price. No more. God dang excuses. But you wanna know what else has no excuses? B roll. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, let's go.